Rio de Janeiro, home of carnival, cachaça, and cheap cocaine. A mecca for many who seek sun, sex, and samba. Or at least that is what the majority of tourists seem to be there for. But for Brazilians, those who make their life here, there is a constant feeling of flux, of change just about to happen, loaded with both hope and trepidation. The days are long, the crime rate is astronomical, and poverty sits on a hillside overlooking affluence. In July 1994, one more in a series of changes in currency brought about apparent economic stability compared to the previous decade of wildly galloping inflation. With the real, the new currency, Brazil had come of age. This was what the conservative government wanted the population to believe. National elections were just around the corner. Two years earlier in municipal elections, a man who up until then had little time for Brazilian political establishment ran for a seat in the legislative chamber of the city. In his 30 seconds of free television time, which all candidates were given, he advised voters that he didn't care if they voted for him, but when they do vote, they should cast it in favor of the Workers' Party, because, he said, they are good people. Needless to say, he was elected, possibly because he was the only candidate not to have begged, bribed, cajoled or threatened the electorate to vote for him. He became an elected legislator, a vereador of the municipal chamber of Rio de Janeiro. This man was also an established man of the theater. Since the early 70s, his work has had much to do with some of the very significant redefinitions that have occurred in the practice of theater. His name is Augusto Boal. <laughs>